Um, I'm going to move swiftly on to Martin Moore. Martin, uh, there's a neat segue to you here because David has talked about um, independence, he's talked about financial um, uh, arrangements. Um, would you like to give us your reflections on the financial independence of the BBC? Has it changed? Um, if it has, how might it be reinforced and buttressed? Um, is financial independence enough? Uh, is it necessary? Is it sufficient? Over to you. Thank you. Um, and I should say, in the context of that, um, I was asked uh, a few months ago by BT Trust to um, examine this. Um, I'm at King's College London to examine um, the, 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 the issue of BBC's financial independence and possible ways in which to better protect it, um, which uh, uh, is what I'm essentially speaking to. Um, to say uh, up front that I've, I've spent the last uh, two decades, I suppose, seeing the BBC from many different angles, um, uh, from within the corporation in the late 1990s, uh, outside of some of those competitors in the noughties, um, from the perspective of an independent media think tank, and now from the perspective of academe. Um, now, financial independence is uh, distinct from other forms of independence, whether they be editorial uh, or constitutional, um, or indeed public perceptions of independence, but they are necessarily, uh, they necessarily influence them, and uh, in many cases overlap with them. And there have been, I found, when I, was, when I was doing this research, uh, a number of developments in the last decade or so uh, that have had um, considerable impact on BBC's financial independence and have arguably um, weakened its status as uh, uh, an autonomous institution. And I'll, I'll point to just three of those. The first is um, the BBC being asked to go, uh, to, to take on roles beyond its public purposes as set out in the Royal Charter. Um, the precedent for this, the most recent precedent, appears to have been in 2006, uh, when in the process of negotiating the last charter, uh, the BBC agreed to help with the process of digital switchover. And that was written, written uh, into the charter. Um, but then in 2010, um, less the BBC's own initiative, um, it uh, took over responsibility, continued to, 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 to um, help with switchover, but took over responsibility for the majority of S4C, for supporting the new um, local television services uh, and uh, the BBC World Service and BBC Monitoring. And then last year in 2015, it took on responsibility for the over 75s license fee. Now, some of these um, uh, were natural in many ways uh, and fell within the public purposes of the BBC. Um, some of them didn't and are out of the BBC's control, for example, in the case of S4C and certainly with the uh, local television services. Um, and of course, the diversion of funds itself uh, uh, compromise the BBC's freedom to decide what to do with its own money uh, from the licence fee um, uh, to pursue its uh, public purposes. The second development um, is uh, a, a relatively ad hoc, opaque and rushed uh, uh, couple of uh, funding settlements, both in 2010 and 2015. Um, now, I, I have to say it came as quite a surprise to me, I hadn't realised how separate in some cases, the, the negotiation of the funding settlements has become from the agreement of the uh, license fee itself. Um, in 1999, there was a seven-year settlement agreed, uh, then in, in 2006, a six-year settlement, and then that was renegotiated in 2010, and we've just seen a negotiation last year, and the the door is still open, possible further renegotiation. So um, there's been a, a separation of, of those two. Um, the third development uh, I certainly wasn't aware of, and a few people seem to have been aware of, um, and on the face of it, uh, it seems to be of little importance, but from the people I spoke to, has had quite a profound impact on the BBC. And it was in 2006 when the Office of National Statistics reclassified the BBC from being a public corporation um, to being part of the uh, central government sector. And at the same time, it reclassified the license fee as a tax rather than a service charge. Now, uh, this was for it to, to, to coordinate the international accounting norms. Um, uh, and, and, and was certainly, um, from someone I spoke with the ONS, that was, that was the reason behind it. There, wasn't, there was no other ulterior motive. Um, but in practical terms, what this has meant is that the, the BBC's income expenditure appears on the government, central government accounts. And, and according to those that I spoke with, 
has since been considered more closely within the comprehensive spending reviews um, and, uh, and thought of much more as a part of the assets and liabilities statement, um, which uh, I quote the um, uh, previous Select Committee 2011, um, increases the risk of the BBC being seen as they said little different to a government department or agency. So those three developments, and I could talk to more, but those three developments suggest a direction of travel towards less financial independence and towards less autonomy over spending <coughs> at the BBC. And in the, in the study, uh, uh, from the conversations I had, the interviews that I did, I identified eight possible ways to, to slow or reverse uh, the direction of travel. I'll just mention three. The first, um, which was brought up by a number of people, was independent economic regulation of the BBC. Um, many regulators already play a, an economic as well as a standard setting role. Um, if you take someone like Offwatt, uh, Offwatt uh, uh, tells water providers what it can charge customers and sets basic standards of service. Um, it uh, struck many I spoke to as uh, a natural development that should there be a new uh, an independent regulation of the BBC that it uh, ought to assess its budgetary needs, uh, its value, its affordability, and make recommendations um, both for the license fee and settlement. Uh, the second very practical step, uh, which has been uh, in many ways really referred to, is just a very simple one, which is to institute fixed year cycles um, and processes for funding settlements. <coughs> it seems peculiar that it has been and continues to be so ad hoc in most other areas of public life, whether it's uh, network rail, the OBR, the pharmaceutical price regulation scheme, there are uh, set periods, only four or five years, for, um, for, for uh, pricing and funding settlements. And the third um, is to uh, formally oblige public justification for funding agreements. Um, uh, given that the public do uh, pay directly for the, service, for the service, it seems only fair that they should have a role in the funding of the service, particularly if it has really quite profound implications for the service that's provided for them. And indeed, public consultation is integral to many other decision-making processes at other regulators, whether it's Ofcom, Ofgen, the ORR, or indeed the recent NHS Citizens Program. Um, there are other ways, um, uh, which, I won't, which I won't go into, um, but uh, just <coughs> suffice to say that if nothing is done, uh, the direction of travel, as I say, is towards less financial autonomy, less independence, and the impression, if not the actuality, of the BBC much more as a department or agency rather than an independent autonomous institution.